Eagles Entertainment. We welcome Eagles everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro. On its Saturday at the Novacare Complex, and the Eagles have gotten down to the initial 53-man roster, and I bring in Eagles General Manager Howie Roseman. And Howie, what I want to do is, if we could, I think the fans, there's a bit of a curiosity. They haven't seen the, the, the team, right? No, no preseason games. So instead of talking about how you got to 53, let's talk about the 53, if that's okay. Sure. Um, the quarterback position, Howie. You've got three of them here. Discuss that position, if you don't mind. I'd like to go position by position. Just to, These fans are just dying to know what we have here. You got great energy today, Dave. You are ready for next Sunday against Washington. <laughs> I am I have ready no for doubt that. about that. I, I know. Me too. That. Me too. All right, you got me fired up. Here okay. we go. So everything starts with Carson Wentz, you know, and Carson Wentz, uh, as I'm sure you've seen and our fans have seen, came back in tremendous shape, you know, not having to rehab. Um, he looks incredibly strong, explosive. I'm really excited for him, and we go as he goes. You know, he's the leader of our team and a special player in person. So I'm really excited about where he is, and – Behind him, you know, we got two quarterbacks and, and starting with Nate, a guy that has been in our system for a long time and we keep bringing back because we believe in Nate Sudfeld and, and his talent and his ability to lead this team if called upon. Um, and then Jalen, you know, Jalen, obviously our second round pick. Um, this guy has been a winner everywhere he's been. He's been a tremendous player everywhere he's been. And it doesn't take long for you to watch him on the football field and see that the guy's got an ability to make plays. He's a unique playmaker. Um, throwing the ball, running the ball, and um, he's got a presence about him. So really, really happy about that quarterback position. Knock on my head yeah. right there yeah. um, to keep them all healthy and rolling. Specifically with Carson, added some strength. Did you see any difference in his velocity or in his performance in training camp with that added strength? You know, it's hard because he's got such incredible velocity to begin with. I mean, he's got unique arm talent, Dave. You know, it, it's since the day we saw him, he had unique arm talent and um, unique physical ability. So, you know, I, I don't know that necessarily like that that's increased because it's at a very high level. Okay. But um, I know he's just preparing himself for a long season and um, he's in a great mindset. And then, Howie, with Jalen, I wonder how much does not having the spring on field drills and no preseason games. How much does it hurt rookie quarterbacks in general in this training camp going into the regular season? Well, obviously, the more reps you get, the better you are at anything. The more experience you get, the better you are at anything. You know, we see that all in all of our jobs. And I think that um, the one thing about Jalen is he's played a lot of football. He's played a lot of football on a big stage and um, going back to high school and obviously in college at two different big time programs. And so nothing, the game isn't too big for him. Um, but when you talk about rookie quarterbacks throughout the league, you know, we saw this in 2011 in the lockout. I think it ended up that uh, there were three starting quarterbacks that were rookies that year. Obviously, we're not asking Jalen to do that um, here. But uh, those are things that you'd love to see. You know, you'd love to, to have a preseason game and evaluate all these guys and, and give them the, the game reps so it's not the first time they're getting on the field in Washington. Three running backs on the roster how does Corey Clement look? Um, he said he really changed his diet. He trained really well coming in. Does he look like he's back to that healthy, you know, do everything kind of running back that we had enjoyed so much in the past? He really does, Dave. You know, we're really excited about where Corey is. And he came in and we told him no promises you know, when we resigned him and just said, and he just said, just give me an opportunity. And since day one, he's had that smile on his face and, I think the unique thing about Corey in his role is he's really a four down back, you know, and by that I mean uh, he can run between the tackles on first and second down, he can catch the football, he can pass protect, and then he can help you on fourth down on special teams as well. And so that guy's a very valuable guy um, when he's playing like he looks like he's playing through this training camp. And um, we love having him on the football team. He brings great energy to the team, and he loves being a Philadelphia Eagle. Seven wide receivers, Howie. If you could comment on what you saw from J.J. in year two, and then the three rookies before Jalen got hurt, obviously, was making plays, but also Hightower and Watkins makes it. So of that seven, we've got four really young ones. Yeah, and it starts with our veterans. You know, Deshaun came in here really motivated to, to prove that he's still the player that we know he can be, and he worked extremely hard in the offseason, and and Alshon, too. Alshon, you know, came back in tremendous shape and tremendously focused and driven to have a great year. You know, it really reminds me of where he came when he came to us in 2017. You know, he knows what's set out there and he wants to prove it. And um, and then you bring in 
JJ, you know, you talk about JJ. I don't want to forget Greg Ward, yep. too, who um, catches everything and works as hard as ev- everyone and can separate at the top of his route. And uh, JJ looks different. You know, his lower body flexibility is different. Um, he can get in and out of his breaks better than before. He's using his body. He looks like the JJ that we saw in college. You know, there was a play last week in practice um, on a vertical route where you just saw him being able to box out a defender and and that's what he does you know he catches everything he uses his body really well and and he can separate for a big man um, then you talked about the rookie guys and obviously a little disappointed that about Jalen a little setback there because um, he looked like we expected him to look and the things that he can do are kind of different um, and unique he's really strong with the ball in his hands he got a really strong lower body obviously he's got explosiveness and uh, we'll get him back and he'll help this football team in a variety of ways um, John Hightower um, he's he's had a good camp you know he's he's a guy that uh, has really good athletic ability he's a good route runner and he has speed and so um, we've seen that during training camp but now we're getting into real games and these guys haven't played in a real game in the National Football League so um, I think that's that's for them. And then, you know, Quez, the last guy there, uh, his speed is real. You see the 4-3. Um, you see his ability to get vertical, to go track the deep ball. Um, and so we'll continue to work with him as well. I guess the question at tight end, how he's only two tight ends on the roster, um, how do you feel about that? Well, we'll see. You know, I think that as we, sp- what we saw in the last 24, 36 hours and we were looking um, – uh, we felt like maybe that position was a position that there were some out there and some opportunities. Um, we also wanted, don't want to necessarily get too cute with that number, and we saw a couple of guys that we knew could help us. Um, with the new practice squad rules, you can have an opportunity if you needed a guy on Sunday to bring that guy up and, and kind of go from there. And, um, you know, the roster looks one way at 4 o'clock on Saturday, and, and we'll see how it looks, you know, tomorrow and, and even next Saturday. Okay. Uh, Howie, offensive line, injuries have really played a part in this. You're looking to develop young players, Jordan Mulata and uh, Herbig and some of these young. Can you talk about them and Driscoll and and what you've seen from younger players that this football team is going to need? Yeah, Dave, I I think we're getting into a a little bit of a new era of our football team, and and we're going to have really good veteran players, but we're going to have young players that we're going to count on. And, um, you know, we went back, and and, uh, in 2016, Big V was a fifth-round pick, and he had to start as a rookie, and he had to start games. And so we're preparing these guys to start and play and uh, disappointed that we've lost two of our five starters before the season started, but we know that happens, you know, and we can overcome this. We can overcome it. Uh, We still have good players. That's why we invest in the offensive line. And uh, you talked about Driscoll, and Driscoll is a guy that gets better and better. And, you know, for us, um, as guys who kind of help try to put this team together, we like to talk to our players about the guys they face. And when you talk to our defensive linemen about Driscoll, he stays engaged. He stays connected to his blocks. You know, he doesn't swing and miss a lot. Um, there's not there's not a lot of oh boy moments there, and uh, he's got athleticism in his body. And I think he's gonna get better and better. We're excited about him. Um, you, you wanted to, I could Jordan, see it. Dave. Jordan, a lot of no. I mean, what, what, you what wanted to ask of, me something. I could see it. You're like, <laughs> no, you're, what, what kind <laughs> of growth has Jordan has Jordan made for you? Yeah, you know, Jordan came in and and he wasn't able to practice with us right away. And I think he was getting back into shape and and he's taken a big jump in the last two weeks. And um, Jordan's got unique physical ability. I mean, he he's not a big man. He is a huge man with long arms. He's hard to get around. He's got he's got great feet for a big man. And it's just experience for him. You know, he's a guy that you wish had some of these preseason games, but um, you know, he's made he's made some good progress, and, and we know at some point he, both those guys are probably going to have to take the field for us. Howie, do you believe the D-line will be as dominating as you expect it to be? You know what I mean? Like, you built with Hargrave and Malik Jackson, and you've invested so much into the D-line. Do you expect great things from that group? I expect great things from that group, but, you know, part of this game is staying healthy and then producing, you know, and we haven't gotten there yet, but... I think what what was fun was um, seeing the skill set from all those guys that we expected and knowing that um, we saw that skill set without Derek Barnett, without Hargrave there, two guys that obviously are huge resource guys for us and players that we, we believe in. So um, we're excited about that group, but obviously um, you know we got to go out and play and, and see them do it. How did Malik look to you in camp? To me, he looked like he was explosive and – Back. I mean, did you see him pre-injury form in this camp? 
Yeah, he looked like the guy that we signed. You know, he looked like the guy that we had the the high expectations. We have high expectations for for him, and he's explosive, and he's twitched up, and he's long, and he's hard to block. You know, we have some good interior offensive linemen, and he's hard to block. And, and I think the other thing with Malik is he's determined to to remind people of who he is. And, and I, I personally love guys who have chip on their shoulders, Dave. You know, I think it fits our city. It fits the personalities of a lot of people in this building, you know, and uh, – I'm excited for Malik and the opportunity he has for us going Hang forward. in there with me, Howie. We're almost done here. Uh, linebackers, the, the player I want to focus on is TJ Edwards and what growth you've seen from him year one to year two. Yeah, TJ is a guy that, you know, you think about it and um, some guys are a, a good byproduct of the combine and then some guys get dinged a little bit for it. And TJ didn't run a 40 as well as probably he would have liked. But he is an instinctive football player. And if you say, you know, what's the first trait you're looking for in a linebacker? You're looking for instincts. And so he's got a great feel for route combinations. He's got a nose for the ball. You know, he had six interceptions, I think, in in college, his last year in college. And you see that out here. And uh, he's got thump, too. When we sat down as a staff and watched all of his tape from last year, um, and it it was a bunch of plays, but not, you know, overly uh, a large amount, he just – He's in position to make plays, and he's got thumb too. But um, he is not an old school first and second down between the tackles thumper. That's a, he's not limited to just that. He can play in space. And then finally, on on that position, I'm not sure the fans know Duke Riley. Can you explain mm-hmm. what he brings to the defense? Yeah, Duke, Duke Riley's a guy that you know comes out of LSU. He's a third round pick. He basically replaces Deion Jones there, and. Um, he, he's an explosive, twitched-up dude, and uh, we got a chance to get him last year, and he quickly became uh, one of our leaders on special teams, and um, he, too, had limited opportunities on defense, but you saw the athleticism. You saw the explosiveness, and um, he has a huge passion for the game, um, and so, you know, he's a guy that, that we, we do feel like has a chance to be a good player for us. Okay, uh, cornerbacks, what do you see from big play Slay, and then the fans don't know about Roby Coleman. This kid, I just love him in the nickel <laughs> position. I think he's terrific. I think he's tenacious. Yeah. I love the way he plays football. Can you yeah. talk about those two guys? Yeah, you know, our fans are going to love big play Slay. You know, it, it's uh, when you have a corner who can get you the ball back, who who has eyes for the ball, who um, relishes playing these number one receivers and it has sticky coverage with them and can play inside and out. And, you know, his confidence in his demeanor, you know, one of the things that stinks is that, I think our fans at this point, if we were in in a normal uh, non-COVID world, would already be buying up his his jerseys because he is a Philadelphia Eagles kind of player. His swagger, his confidence, uh, and then his ability, you know, kind of fits us. And you talked about Roby Coleman. He's another guy. He's sticky coverage. Um, He's all over receivers. He does not back down. You know, he's a little man who plays big, and um, we're excited to have both those guys. All right, at safety, there are six of them here. I'd like to focus on Jalen Mills and the transition from cornerback to safety. What have you seen? Yeah, we've seen what we expected to see, which is uh, that there's really nothing that's too big for Jalen. You know, Jalen is just a a ball-playing junkie. You know, he loves to play, and he's got range and safety. He'll come down in the box. He doesn't hesitate to hit you. He can cover tight ends. He can cover slot receivers. You know, still got that corner background, and and he loves being a leader back there. You know, he – he's done a tremendous job. One of the first few days that we were here, he asked to speak to the team, and um, man, that guy's got passion and passion and leadership ability, and he's got the playmaking ability. Um, at that position to really help us. So excited for him, excited for uh, you know our team to have him in that role. Nine of ten draft picks on the roster, Howie. There's got to still be a sense of we haven't seen them in a game, so we really don't know. But, I mean, how do you feel about the group to this point? Well, I think we got good competition on this football team, and they're going against good guys when, when they're going against. And then, you know, you see the skill set. You, you get an opportunity to see what's in their body, and, and that doesn't go away. But you're right, Dave. You know, we got to go out on Sundays and prove it, all of us. And, um, you know, we will miss our fans. But I have no doubt that when we're playing here that we're going to hear a little roar every from the city of Philadelphia every time we score a touchdown. We're going to hear it from the houses and – Um, the streets of Philadelphia, and I'm excited for that. It all starts next Sunday at the Washington football team. Howie Roseman, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I know you've got a lot of work to do. Just This roster is not complete. I think that's a message the fans really need to understand, that this thing is always a work in progress. 
I like it, Dave. It's yeah. like a living, breathing organism. It is a living, breathing organism. Actually, 53 it, of them, plus hey. the practice squad. Hey. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Howie <laughs> Roseman, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having Take me. Take care. Okay, so the Eagles at 53 players on the active roster. And just to give you the timeline, they will establish a practice squad by Monday, let's say, up to 16 players. Extremely critical to get that group together and have them ready for any sort of late week duty and get them prepared to play games on Sundays. Otherwise, you are going to see some changes. The IR rules are different. So you'll see players, perhaps somebody like Will Parks, Eagle Safety, who was injured last week, go on short-term IR. So you're going to have to stay tuned to PhiladelphiaEagles.com in this podcast for all the very latest with you. Uh, we're going to get ready for the Washington football team and the opener. Doug Peterson will be my guest for Wednesday's podcast as we turn our attention to Washington and the 2020 Philadelphia Eagles regular season opener. I want to thank Peter Kelly and Ray Doyle for their work on the podcast. Thanks to all of you for joining us here on the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Well, we're here. The NFL season is upon us. And isn't that a great feeling? And I feel like I don't really know what to expect. That's going to be part of the fun for 2020. I'm insider Dave Spadaro. Thanks so much for joining me here, everybody. Have yourselves a great Eagles night and fly, Eagles, fly. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles!